Putin's army does not have enough bags for the bodies of its soldiers. Either there are too many of them or the Russian Defense Ministry has decided not to spend money on this attribute for transporting home the bodies of its soldiers who died in Ukraine. As reported by the Telegram channel Chelyabinsk of the Future, the widow of the deceased occupier, Chelyabinsk volunteer Anna Deryabina, announced a collection for the purchase of bags. As scary as it is to write about this, we need bags for the bodies of our soldiers to transport the dead guys. We need a lot. The cost of one is 200 rubles. The reality, unfortunately, is that the guys buy them at their own expense, she wrote. A day later, Derya Bina reported the closure of the collection. According to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, the irretrievable losses of the Russian army in Ukraine exceeded 612,000 people. As reported, the command of the Russian army continues to throw people to the slaughter, trying to capture the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces at any cost. The Russian army's offensive is resulting in heavy losses and a repeat of the experience of World War II in its worst manifestation since the command of the Russian armed forces does not value the lives of soldiers and is ready to throw them to the slaughter en masse. At the same time, the Russian command does not learn from its mistakes and does not even try to do so. According to Russian military personnel, the rank and file of the commanders are only interested in awards and bonuses. Unsurprisingly, the Russian general staff overwhelmingly focuses its recruitment efforts on several impoverished, non-ethnic Russian regions on the racist rationale that the nationalists concerned presumably value high salaries more than life. A number of protests in such places as Dagestan and Buryatia suggest that some natives are aware of being singled out for death, but the numbers of protesters appear to be small. Most Russians presumably serve in the armed forces because they believe they have to. If you're called up and fail to report, a whole slew of painful sanctions awaits you. Unwilling to place themselves under the immediate risk of definitely being jailed, they choose the more distant risk of possibly being killed. Perhaps the gods will smile on them. Perhaps the war will end. There's another less reassuring explanation for the Russian willingness to take a beating. They may be used to being terrorized by their leaders and consider blind obedience to unjust oppression to be perfectly normal. Supporters of this view generally point to Russian history, much of which reads like a never-ending story of elite crime and popular punishment. The fire that occurred following Ukrainian drone attack at the oil base in Kamensk Shakhtinsk in Russia's Rostov region on the night of August 28 has not been put out yet. Continuing for more than a day and a half, the fire was accompanied by explosions from oil tanks and covered a wider area. The images were taken and distributed by local residents. According to reports, there is a shortage of water and foam to extinguish the fire. Although a fire engine was brought from Volgograd region, it was not enough for extinguishing the fire. The provincial administration said there was no threat of the fire spreading to residential areas. Another footage of the explosion that took place at the oil base in Kamensk-Shakhtinsk city in Russia's Rostov region overnight has been released. 
Images taken and shared by local residents show the moment of an explosion in one of the oil tanks. Firefighters who were at the site of the incident had to flee from the area. It should be noted that the explosion was caused by fire that occurred after the Ukrainian kamikaze drone strike on the night of August 28. The fire that lasted throughout the day caused an explosion in the fuel reservoirs at the oil base in the area. There were no reports about casualties.